Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wizard Build series. A little while ago, well, two months ago I guess, I redid the brakes. This little mount right here, uh, on the old one, broke. So I just reused this mount and directly connected it to the, uh, the brake bar, whatever you would call that. In hopes of solving my issue of when I hit the brake pedal, the it, everything moves forwards, which is what happened again here. Uh, that didn't work. Well, it did kind of work, but it didn't work enough. So, today, I'm going to dig into the actual brake assembly inside the uh, wheel there. So, there's a few things I have to move first. I have to take the wheel off, meaning I have to take the fender, storage rack, and uh, the kickstand off. So I'm going to have to find a way to support this from the middle. Probably using a kickstand or, or a jack or something. Car jack. And I don't know if I have to take this belt off. If I do, that's going to be a pain. So when I find a way to get that off the ground, I'll be back. I've got the back of the bike off the ground. Storage rack isn't, or the uh, kickstand isn't holding it anymore. I've got a horrible setup going on. Car jack piece of wood. And then I have two pieces of wood supporting it on each side. Well, one on each side, two in total. Uh, it's, I'm scared to really put too much force onto it. I can shake it a little bit and it feels steady, but I don't want to push it too much. So, it should be fine as long as I can take everything off carefully. So, I'll be back when I get something off. I'm a few minutes into this, and uh, I've taken off a few things. Mainly the storage rack and saddlebags and the center stand. <laughs> Whoa, that's where the storage rack was laying. It's... Looking pretty good. It's coming along decently. I have a lot of stuff to attach, but I'm going to take off the fender next because I have to take the wheel off. And it's going to be real hard to fit that wheel under that little gap. So I'm going to take the fender off and might even be able to bang those dents out. So, they're not bad, but I noticed them right when I walked over, so... I'll be back when I get that off. I got everything off of the back. I had the fight of my life with a tiny little screw. This one. Because it rusted and I couldn't get onto the other side of a wrench. So I struggled with that for about 20 minutes. But the wheel's finally off. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. But it's still a big wheel. Looks so weird now. Without having anything there. Chains flopped right out. Belt was just dangling. It's got a neat little tensioning system though for the wheel. Well, for the chain I guess. Pretty cool. Anyway, now that the wheel's off, I can finally start digging into the internals of this. It feels... it's not smooth. Like, if I do that, you can see it's it's kind of locking in the place. Like a, It feels like a ratchet. So that's weird. Anyway, I'll start digging into that, and I'll be back once I get... Once I find something, so... I have the brake assembly out. It's a pretty interesting contraption. You turn the uh, sprocket backwards and it pulls out that uh, this piece here the one with splines on it it slides on a little rod right there where that cut is and that's how it disengages the brakes it's hard to tell because everything's covered in grease but pretty interesting and I don't know what is causing the brakes to not work properly well they work I don't know what's causing it to kick forward so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash all of this in gas and 
take a deep look at everything and see if I do see anything wrong with it. So I'll be back when I I'll be back when I get the this all washed off. It's been a little while, but I have all of the parts cleaned up and well fixed to what I can do. It's amazing how many parts were in that one little uh cylinder. Cause here's here's the main bolt or axle, I guess you could call it. There's the sprocket has bearings inside of it. I couldn't get that cover off either. Looks like someone tried before me too. Uh, this piece here, this works to actuate the brakes. It slides right onto that little rod and uh, when you when you pedal backwards this piece goes right over this. So when you pedal backwards it pushes this down onto this piece which pushes it into all of these, which should, uh, they should be on this piece right here. And I assume it's some sort of friction. They all work together and, uh, become one break. And, uh, this is actually the brand of them too, new departure break, which I think I can actually get parts for this if I need it, but I don't think I need to. I did notice on this, I'm not sure if it will show on camera, no, there was a tiny little crack, not bad, but it was there, I noticed it, so, I I doubt it'll do anything, but this, all the pieces, all of these were, like, all the bearings, they were full of grease, I cleaned them out, they rolled, there's surprisingly little, very little wear inside of the, uh, the brakes. Well, you can see the race. It's not bad. What you see there, that's just a piece of paper towel. Yeah. A little bit, but from what I uh, gathered, this bike was made around the 40s from the styling of it. So it's a miracle that these have even made it that long in that good of condition but uh i'm gonna pack it up for tonight so i'll continue in the morning and i'll put these back together so see you then it's the next day and i'm finally ready to start putting the brakes back together uh luckily for me there is a video on youtube of some guy from like 12 years ago putting one of these back together so if I need any help, I'll just watch that, but I think, I think I remember how to do it. I'm not going to do a time lapse for this because I'm not good at making them yet. So I'll just come back through various steps of this. I'm getting close to halfway done. I have grease on all of the, uh, the brake discs as well as the little bearing down there. I still have to put grease on the outside. I didn't just so I can actually, uh, hold it folk getting covered in grease. The little crown piece on there too. I'm not even sure what to call it. And I'm going to put that in the uh, in the wheel there. I have to fill that with grease too. Right now I'm just filling this up with grease. Bearings full. This stuff, yeah, I can turn it upside down. It doesn't fall out so much. And these are all the parts I have left to put on. I have dust cover for that half there. As well as a little bearing race for uh, the little third bearing in that one, in the sprocket. So I'll be back once I put that into the, the uh, wheel. I'm about halfway done. I have half the assembly in the uh, drum cylinder. I don't know what you'd call it. Anyway, I packed it with grease. Can't even see the parts in there anymore. And now I just have to put that piece in to finish it. And uh, that bearing race to tighten it down, then all the washers, dust cover, and brake arm. So I'll be back when I get that done. I finished putting everything together. It, everything seems right. Uh, it should all be right. I hope so, at least. This turned smooth, which it didn't before. It was kind of like a ratchet. 
it's a lot smoother now. It's, it, you can kind of feel a little ratchet, but very smooth. And on the other side, I think I found out why the brakes kick forwards. A long time ago, uh, when I was testing this, the brakes locked up while I was driving. You can't see it from here because the nut's blocking it, but this, the, the arm, the metal has been compressed in the shape it should be. It's like a circle of two flat ends. Uh, two corners were compressed, so it kind of shakes around. I can't... I need something to hold the sprocket on the other side, so I can't really show it. But the metal compressed in the corners, and I think the bolt, or the, uh... The thing that holds all the, the, uh, brake discs, that cracked, and it turned to more of an oval shape than a circle... And that combined with this moving around a little bit, I think that's what kicks the brakes forwards. I hammered this out smooth a little bit, so it turns about a third as much as it did before now. So I think that is the issue. If, if I keep having it, then I'll uh, weld some more metal onto the piece. But as of now, I think everything is pretty good. So I'm going to start putting this back on the bike. And probably be back once I get the fender and the saddlebag on. I have the fender and the saddlebag back on. They're not fully attached. The arms are sitting on there, but... Like, the supports are, but they're not attached to anything. And I don't want to... I already did it before by accident. When I was getting up, I put my weight on this and the entire bike tipped backwards. So I gotta be careful. And, uh, I did notice this. Front fender isn't connected there. So, when it's back on the kickstand, I'm gonna fix that up. So, next thing I have to do is put the center stand back on. And, uh, inside of it are these neat little, like, rollers, almost. Focus camera. Well, that's not going to focus. Anyway, they're essentially a a drilled out bolt that have been sanded down to be round. Or a nut, I mean. And I know this because I lost one. And I ended up doing uh, that. Taking a nut, drilling it out, and sanding it down. You can't tell. You can't tell which one's the real one which one's the fake one. Because they both look the same. So, I'm going to get that on and I'll be back. Everything's hooked up and all finished now. Saddlebags are on, storage rack, rear fender. Kickstand, well center stand. It's all looking pretty good. Now there is uh, one thing I've noticed. Is that the pedals... If I turn the wheel, looks like there's a little bit of drag. So, I imagine that's just from the grease setting in, so I feel like after a little bit of driving it should go away. And if it doesn't, then I'll go back in, I guess. But, hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.